It's 5.30. Time to call our meeting to uh, order tonight. Roll call, please, Carl. Councilmember Remley. Here. Ronain. Lundsman. Here. Slate Hansen. Here. Johnson. Here. Bunsness. Here. Olson. Here. Rux. Here. Mayor Leveson. Here. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And Okay. Scratch uh, plan in and put Mark in. Okay. All right. Uh, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes of last uh, Monday and Tuesday. So moved. Second. Motion Johnson, second by Olson. If there are no changes, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Uh, for open forum, we have uh, Aaron Schultz listed as doing an update. And there he is. There I am. <laughs> Floor is yours, Aaron. Thank you very much. I won't take too much of your time. I, I passed around the numbers uh, for 211, uh, which uh, is running. The numbers that they have here is January through June. It's kind of a, a midpoint. Uh, but if you do remember that uh, 211 actually launched about mid February. So this is really about four and a half months worth of data. And uh, you can see the numbers there that there's been uh, 326. Uh, unique contacts, whether it be phone calls and or text messages or emails into the Helpline Center. And from that, uh, over 400 uh, referrals uh, went out. You can see that the, the largest category there is uh, suicide prevention crisis line. And uh, to break that out even a little bit further, they identified, uh, they being the Helpline Center, identified uh, 50 calls in which uh, there was some type a, of uh, suicide ideation uh, in progress, whether they talk about hurting themselves, whether they have a plan in place. Uh, and in 46 of those uh, calls, they were able to work with the individual that was calling uh, and able to circumvent a, a well-checked call from uh, local law enforcement. Uh, other types of crises calls that would come in, uh, it could be uh, initial reportings of um, some type of crisis within the home, uh, identifying abuse, whatever that might be. Uh, we will get a further breakdown of that after uh, the one year mark. But uh, I, I wanted to say thank you to this group for uh, allocating uh, last year for, uh, for this year, the 2018 year, uh, to, to bring this to Brown County. Uh, again, the promotional funds are the lion's share of this in partnership with uh, four other entities and uh, the, the preliminary recommendation that's going forward for 19. Uh, the goal here was for, uh, after one year, for uh, we were hoping to hit around 600 contacts. Uh, you can see that we're uh, ahead of pace for that. And, uh, uh, you know, we had a preliminary meeting with some of our action group members last week and... Uh, it was it was a mixed uh, mixed conversation. You know, some people are obviously obviously alarmed by some of these numbers that are, are coming out, and then the the practitioners that are working uh, in this uh, day to day said this is great. We love that um, people are reaching out for resources, and so you can look at it from uh, a couple different angles. So, I uh, just wanted to give an update for you, uh, and at this point, I'll open it up for any questions. Is this just about the same opening numbers as similar to other towns on a proportional basis? I would say we're higher. You know, we've kind of been eyeballing uh, the first years for uh, Huron, Brookings. Uh, obviously, Sioux Falls, Rapid City are, are we're, we're, I would say, significantly around 300 calls the first year in and of itself. Uh, what's not included in here is has a uh, special texting line uh, northern students it still calls in them as college age or northern students trained within that crisis those uh, numbers so the higher they're just not uh, given out for all numbers we'll get that at the end of the year as well okay Alan reminds again how many Yep. 
percent of the suicide, mental health, or psychiatric. And that's an important yep. word. Anyone else? Jennifer? Yes, Aaron. I was wondering where are the so where are people getting the number, the two one one? How are you promoting it? Uh, a variety of ways. Uh, law enforcement is helping uh, when they're dispatched on calls, uh, if they feel it's necessary to uh, hand out that information. Most of the practitioners that work within mental health, uh, the hospitals are helping us out. Uh, DSS is a, a large referral. Uh, the uh, library is a large referral of 211 as well. Uh, pretty much any avenue that we thought we could utilize, we, we certainly try. Um, and we're going to have a secondary push come late fall, just to continue to get that uh, that number out there, the utilization. I, I think once we see year two and maybe, you know, eventually year three, we'll see where that plateaus. And uh, we're continuing to uh, make sure this number gets out. Also, the Helpline Center is uh, bringing out uh, another program called, you know, 211 University. And that's really guided towards the practitioners to look at all the resources that are available within the website it's, itself. Um, they have a lot of guides that are out there from um, housing assistance to what for bed bug remediation. Um, they get quite a few calls on that as well. And so uh, they have pamphlets, flyers, everything available for that. So uh, we anticipate that the, the Helpline Center will be up here uh, October, November timeframe as well. Okay, anything else? Yeah, one question. Mm -hmm. are, are you planning on uh, looking at PC to do something similar to NSU after the first year to try to invite them in? Absolutely. Uh, and, and they were a part of the conversations. They have all our marketing materials. We worked through their uh, Student Services Center as well. Uh, at that time, they did not elect to take on the texting program mm -hmm. itself, but um, they are aware of the, the 211 line as well, and we're, we're more than welcome to give them more information on that as well. One last thing is, uh, I, I work in elder abuse. Is, is that university going to consider uh, elderly questions for scams and different avenues, maybe financial abuse or, or physical abuse or anything like that? You know, that, that question has been posed to us a couple times, and we've posed that to the Helpline Center as well to try to get more information out there. Um, at, at this point, they don't have any specialty subset in elder abuse, uh, where they're looking at is, you know, helping in the, I would say, like the Better Business Bureau and, and things like that, just try, try to help people. If you get uh, to that point, let me know. I have several contacts in the state that will be able to help put that together. That'd be fantastic. They've, I've already talked to them, and they're more than happy to, to step in. Perfect. We, yep, we'd love to follow okay. up on that. Okay. Anyone else? Thanks, John. All right. Thank you much. Thank you. Good work. Uh, we next move to old business and I'd entertain a uh, motion for a second reading for a rezoning ordinance 180701. Move approval. Tell you. Motion Rux and second by uh, Remley. Nothing new, Brett. No changes from last week. Questions from the council? Roll call, Carl. Council member Remley. Aye. Lundsman. Aye. Slate Hansen. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Bunsness. Aye. Olson. Aye. Rux. Aye. Mayor Leeson. Aye. Motion carries. Item 5 is items A through G of routine city business, and we need a motion to approve those. Move, Move approval. Motion, uh, Rumley, second by uh, Olson. Questions on any? All in favor then say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Under new business, uh, assuming that no one is here to oppose the application for a new retail on off sale malt beverage license uh, for colorful creations. And uh, that being the case, we entertain a motion from the council to approve that application. Move approval. Second. Motion Ruck, second by Remley. Questions, anyone? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Uh, item B is the uh, 2019 application for bridge improvement grant funds. And I'm looking here, who's who's taking this? That was me. Okay. Um, we applied unsuccessfully last year for this. This is to do the engineering side of the uh, bridge grant application. So we're actually only asking for funding to do the the actual engineering side of it. Once that's the plans are done, then we would be applying for more funding to do the actual construction. 
Move approval. Second. Motion business second by uh, Johnson. Any questions on this? Uh, all in favor of authorizing uh, that application, then say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item C, uh, Cody is uh, here to uh, request an appointment to his airport board. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Lynn and I conducted interviews uh, a week and a half ago for um, interested parties to serve as the next airport board member on our airport, Aberdeen Regional Airport Board. Um, we are uh, putting before you tonight uh, a nomination to elect or appoint Eric Brenner. Uh, Eric has utilized the Aberdeen Regional Airport in multiple facets for many years, uh, both through commercial aviation and has been involved with the general aviation community now for over two years. And he owns a business here in Aberdeen and, and has for 15 years. Move approval. Second. second. Motion Remley and second by uh, Johnson. Uh, all those in favor of approving that appointment say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. That's a big job with a big commitment. Carl, as you well know, been on the board a long time. So. And uh, Cody, you've uh, you've asked uh, to add to your yeah. appearance here with us tonight. Yeah, I um, wanted to come before the council and uh, just say thanks um, and to try to keep myself composed here. I think I'm just going to read my, my letter that I uh, wrote to Lynn earlier today. Um, Mr. Lander, I regret to inform you that I will be resigning from my position as the Transportation Director for the City of Aberdeen, effective September 15, 2018. I'd like to thank you, the Mayor, and the Aberdeen City Council members for the opportunity. You have provided me to serve Aberdeen and the surrounding area in this role for nearly four and a half years. I can sincerely say this has been the greatest community I have had the opportunity, <coughs> excuse me, opportunity to live and work in. I have you, the aforementioned community leaders, my fellow City of Aberdeen department heads, City of Aberdeen staff, and the citizens of Aberdeen to thank for that. I know I'm leaving the Aberdeen Regional Airport and Aberdeen Ride Line in great hands as I depart. My staff and I have worked tirelessly for the past four and a half years to improve our operations and facilities to better serve the City of Aberdeen. Most often publicly, I receive the accolades for our accomplishments that we have achieved at both departments. However, I would like to put on record that the real credit goes to the staff <clears throat> that I've had the honor to work with in my time at, Aber at the City of Aberdeen. This team under your leadership and the incredible support of the Aberdeen City Council and community will continue to thrive and aspire to accomplish many great things in the future. I asked a few of my staff members to join me here tonight just so you guys can put faces to the folks that are doing those great things. Um, and I've done plenty of things to, to take the heat, uh, and rightfully so. I can screw up many things, but uh, when we're doing things right, these are the people that uh, you have to thank for that. So um, thanks to all of you for the support over the last four and a half years, and to uh, Bob Babcock and his staff at Helms & Associates. They've provided great assistance to get us where we're at with our projects. So thanks to all of you. Thank you, Cody. Actually, fairly minimal number of uh, times where there's been heat compared to maybe some times in previous years prior to you. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Uh, that's been one of your strengths is your ability to handle uh, the different aspects of your job, not only the technical, but uh, uh, dealing with uh, people who aren't always happy. And that's a, that's a, a, a good skill that will serve you at your next position. So thank you very thank much. You. Thanks. <clears throat> The uh, Aberdeen uh, contingent at the uh, municipal league conventions are not going to be as fun as they as they used to be. <laughs> We've lost our social director. <laughs> uh, next on our uh, agenda, we have bills presented for payment from uh, Wellmark Blue Cross for insurance costs: one hundred sixty-seven thousand five hundred dollars, ETS merchant fees, fifteen fifty, Dakota Bank. Uh, Parks and Rec merchant fees five thousand. Uh, same thing for plug and pay one thousand, and for Infantech one thousand. Business Improvement District uh, revenue disbursement two seventy seven. NVC July charges for ride line twenty nine dollars. J and K mowing abatements eight hundred four. UPS charges two fifteen. CVB June tax twenty nine oh forty five. 
Forester testing uh, related to Third Avenue, thirteen hundred dollars. Ringenberg Electric uh, work at Anderson Park, five hundred. MTI uh, work at Anderson Park, twelve hundred five. Great Northern Environmental work on uh, the water treatment reclamation, eighty four dollars. Carl's TV and Appliance refrigerator, uh, sixteen hundred sixty eight dollars. Matt's Tree Service, five hundred fifty. Clark Engineer uh, work for Wetland Mitigation, two thousand sixty four. Sioux Valley. Environmental, uh, 4,600 pounds polymer for water treatment, 7,038. Refund on utility counts, $500. Move approval. Second. Second. Motion rock section by Slade Hansen. Questions on any of these bills? Carl. Council Member Rocks. Aye. Olson. Aye. Von Smith. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Slade Hansen. Aye. Lundsman. Aye. Remley. Aye. Mayor Leveson. Aye. Motion carries. <laughs> Next on our agenda, Lynn, you thought you were going to be the highlight of the night, that it's going to be Cody's retirement. So, so. <laughs> retirement? <laughs> retirement? <laughs> yeah. Retirement from here. Okay, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, Robin, if you flip me over to the presentation. I think it's number four. Okay, thank you. Uh, the Aberdeen Home Rule Charter states that on or before the first day of August, the city manager shall submit to the city council a budget for the ensuing year. And so that's what I plan to do this evening. Uh, I will first start with the capital outlay program of 2019-2023. The reason why I like to start with the capital out pro outlay program is that's where the majority of the questions come from the public as to what activities will be happening to the city. And I feel if I can keep you informed, then you can keep the public informed, and it helps all of us. And this, you notice that this year was kind of an extraordinary year for pavement throughout the city. Uh, I think uh, Robin's doing an excellent job of various different improvements throughout the city, but because of the fact that we took a break from the storm sewer, it gave us the opportunity to reallocate that money, whereas we could put a considerable effort towards pavement and concrete with, throughout the city of Aberdeen for 2018. But 2019 will be a different year, so I'll get into the presentation at this time. City ordinance 040404 adopted in 2004 established a second penny sales tax to provide a funding source to meet the city's major capital improvements. The use of these monies may be used for the following capital improvements, land acquisition, purchasing of firefighting vehicles and equipment, the purchase of mosquito abatement chemicals and equipment. You should know mosquito abatement and chemicals has almost been an equivalent to snow removal in the last couple of years. Debt retirement and minor or major rehabilitation or reconstruction of streets. The 2019 sales tax allocation is based upon the actual sales tax collected in 2017, plus a growth factor of 1.5% for 2018, and a 1.5% increase for 2019. And then there's a small difference dealing with e-commerce sales. The projected increase in Dollars from 2018 to 2019 is estimated to be 310000 Page 2 uh, shows historical revenue data for the sales tax. It shows from 2005 to 2017. But in the middle of the page, you'll, I denoted uh, some changes that we've seen within the sales tax. The recent 10-year annual average for the sales tax growth was 2.04%. The annual average for growth for the most recent four years has been 0.96%. And when you look at that from a revenue perspective, that is only $81,000 when you look at a four-year average. Per year. Per year. For 1%. And if you looked at it from a 2% perspective, it would be $160,000. Moving on to page 3. 
Uh, over 50% of our annual sales tax is used for construction projects. And I'll get into greater detail as we go into the summary report, but I showed the expenditures from 2014 to 2019. As you can see, we started out in 2014 with 4817000 and now we're at $5,160,000. But these improvements uh, are very visual when you drive around and look at some of the things that we been challenged with within the last six, seven year period. Page four uh, shows budget amounts from 2014 to 2019 for the various different categories of sales tax, debt service payments, reserved for equipment, building and other infrastructure improvements and equipment and programs. The, the 2019 allocation that is programmed will be for $9,074,000. Going to the following folded page, the list for total resources showing in a combination with the annual sales <coughs> tax. Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, I converted this PDF file to a PowerPoint so you can follow page by page as I'm making my presentation. <coughs> and I apologize for not mentioning that earlier. In the past, I always did a PowerPoint that was somewhat different than the budget document itself, but this year I converted it where my presentation is exactly uh, the same as the documents that you have printed. But going on to uh, the folded page that's within your uh, booklet, it lists total resources showing in conduction with the annual sales tax. And so if you go to the center column, you can see the annual sales tax projected is $9,074,000. <coughs> over savings, uh, $225,000 federal, state, and other funds, so 3365000 So when you add all those together, as far as projects planned for 2019, you're talking about $14,245,000, which is significant. Uh, pages 5 through 7 provide summary explanation of expenses, and I'll highlight some of these expenses. Uh, for example, uh, airport operations, number one. Federal airport grants requiring a 5% local match. The matching amount covers expenses relating to updating the airport master plan. In addition, a new passenger load bridge. In addition, reconstruction of taxiway C. So federal funds will end up being 2,565,000 and our local participating share is 253,000. And as I stated above, typically the match is about 5% of total, but because of the fact that we got multiple projects going on, we put a little extra money in there just to be on the safe side in case we end up with some additional expenses that we did not budget for. <coughs> Moving on, uh, category number two, buildings and structures. Cost allocation <coughs> for annual maintenance for City Hall. It's the 25000 in case we lose our air conditioning as we did two weeks ago. And you should know that we had it updated, but it looks as though in the future we may have need for a replacement. In addition, uh, bond payments for City Hall when we did the renovation in the old federal courthouse bond payment. The old courthouse payment is scheduled to be reallocated to the NSS U Trust Fund effective 1-1-2020. And I have to update what I put within that paragraph. The old payment for the old courthouse bond was $215,000. Uh, because we had sufficient revenues beyond what was needed for the final payment, uh, we reduced <coughs> that need down to $96,000 where the difference was allocated directly to NSU for 2019 versus 2020. And that difference is $119,000. So between the promotion funds and the early debt retirement of the bond payment, we're looking at a total of $304,000 allocation for 2019. And keep in mind, we were asked for a pledge of $5 million, so as to what point we pay the other $200,000, we will meet our pledge, but as we go forward, we'll see what opportunities there are for the $200,000 payment at a later date. Next item, of community and contingency. This allocation is for the public safety complex of $740,000. The city's share of 911 center operations of 300,000, and then the city's portion of trail grants of 156,000. The trail grants that we're speaking of 
Uh, one would be on 15th Avenue between Dakota and 2nd Street, and the other uh, facility would be the Arboretum Trail. Keep in mind, uh, we're providing about 20% cost share, and so the amount of money that we're receiving from the state for our city portion is equivalent to $492,000. So <clears throat> when you look at it all, that's not too bad. Number four, fire department. This allocation is for the purpose of accumulating replacement funds for vehicles within the fire department. And we make an annual allocation of approximately $200,000 a year. And uh, without this allocation, we would have never been in the position to order the ladder truck that we ordered for 2018, in which I believe that truck will be delivered within the next week. And so you'll have to make a trip down to fire hall number two to see the new truck. And that truck, uh, I think when it was all done with, was probably about $900,000. So you can see that between ambulances and fire trucks and apparatus, it's important that we continue to appropriate a portion of the sales tax to cover future expenses. Number five, library. This allocation is to cover the cost of new library bonds, $410,000. Number six, traffic control upgrades. And if you need to interrupt, Robin, go ahead as well as Carl, but number six, traffic control upgrades, citywide improvements could include 5th Street or Merton and Milgard Road. Any comments on that, Robin? No, not at this point. Okay. Item number seven, parks, recreation, forestry. Allocations are for existing bond payments, mosquito control chemicals, and funding for current and future capital outlay projects. I apologize, I didn't move it forward. So you can see the ARC improvement bond payment, 250,000. I believe that bond payment is paid off at the end of 2019, and I believe you'll see Doug Johnson come in and ask for that amount to be reallocated to help pay for the softball complex improvements he's planning for the future. <clears throat> you also have the aquatic bond payments of $570,000. Then you have mosquito control chemicals of $150,000 and then capital projects of 450,000. So the total yearly annual sales tax allocation for Parks and Rec will be $1,420,000. Moving down to the police, uh, typically the police don't receive sales tax allocations, but approximately two years ago, they asked for a reserve account to build a future computer lab and this will be the last year of allocation towards that reserve account so they'll have available when you look at the accumulated reserves as well as the current sales tax allocation three hundred ten thousand dollars to build that specialty computer lab on the second floor and so you can contact the architect uh, at the end of the year and say that it's a goal for 2019 if in fact the budget is approved by the city council Number nine, street allocation. Uh, the chip seal and maintenance is a typical allocation of $1 million. Citywide curb and gutter maintenance is a typical allocation of about $650,000. Minor arterial rehab, that includes the mill and overlay done throughout the city. And as I stated earlier, we've done a significant amount. When you look at third, you look at uh, the area downtown, and then you look at the area north of town. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for year 2019, this amount will be less than it was in 2018. 2018 minor arterial rehab was a million four, and we're reducing it down to 800,000. Uh, it's necessary for us to go back and get back into the storm sewer. And so when you add up items number 9, 10, 11, and 12, you'll see that we allocated a million 700,000 for the client storm sewer once again. And it's necessary for us to go down to 15th Avenue Southeast and finish that section so we don't hold up the master plan for the college. In addition, uh, when looking at the actual condition of the Klein sewer line north of the railroad tracks, we thought it was necessary that we go and repair that section between uh, Railroad Avenue and 2nd Street. 2nd Avenue. <laughs> okay. And so. We'll be doing just as much for infrastructure, but we'll be done in a different way. And hopefully then in 2020, we can go back to reallocating a substantial amount back to the streets where we can continue to do significant upgrades. 
Also included in streets for 2018 will be Roosevelt and 8th Avenue crossings. There's an appropriation of $200,000 where we'll go in and do signalized crossings for those railroad crossings because of AJP becoming active as a spur route within the city. If you go down to it says state revenues allocated for future projects, 800000 If you go towards the very back of your capital outlay program booklet, you'll see there's a map that says City of Aberdeen Transportation Improvements. Robin has six suggestions for you to determine which one you want to prioritize for our next major uh, arterial improvement. And those suggestions are Highway 281, the business loop uh, from 281 to 5th Avenue to redo the pavement sections within that area. Another one might be North Dakota Street from 8th Avenue Northeast to 24th Avenue Northeast, which is also concrete. Uh, North Dakota Street from 8th Avenue Northeast to railroad tracks, which is concrete. Dakota Street, railroad tracks to 8th Avenue Southeast. In addition, Melgard Road Southeast to uh, South Roosevelt Street to 6th Avenue Street. And then the sixth one is not listed. It determines how you feel the condition of the overhead uh, pass is. Well, we paved it once again. It's not best, but it's better than it was before. At a certain point, it'll be necessary that we concrete that entire overpass. And so you have six options for your next possible major improvement within the city that you need to determine within the near future so we can start programming for that improvement. And so we'll talk about that more in the future. Number 10 uh, is utility sanitary, sanitary sewer improvements. You'll see that uh, for 2019 uh, citywide pipelining, we have $500,000 allocated. And if you go towards the back of your booklet once again, I think it's the very last map. It shows what areas that we've completed to date, in addition, proposed future lining. And for future, future lining, it involves Dakota Street, State Street, Lloyd Street, Royal Road, High Street, Lincoln, and Washington. And depending upon what conditions we run into, it depends how far we can go within a particular year. But we're allocating $500,000 to do improvements as we did in 2017. Well, it's a lot more cost effective to fix the pipe before it collapses. Going to the next page, item number 11, Utility Storm Department. I have an annual allocation once again for Moccasin Creek or between the allocation of 2018 and the allocation of 2019. We've built enough reserves for a phase two improvement if the council should uh, support the engineer. Uh, he's doing work on it right now and we should have additional data for you before the end of the year. Utility Water Department, one of the more significant improvements needed for the Utility Water Department, item number 12, would be what we call the North Jackson Street Reservoir. I don't know how long that reservoir's been there. But I know when I first took over my position, I drove by and thought it was in a kind of rough state and it continues to deteriorate and it's made out of concrete. So drive by sometime in the future and look at it, but uh, we need to do uh, some uh, surface updates for the structure. It's, yeah, the concrete's delaminating and, and it's, it's in need of some help before it becomes a uh, concern for Okay, so when you add all those projects together, we're looking at $14,245,000. In addition, I attach the sheets that show well, what the future uh, requests are for the various different departments that I just got done doing the summary on. You have the airport department, you have a building and structures department, a community contingency. Uh, for example, on the community contingency, you'll see that if you go down to the last item on that typewritten sheet, it says NSU pledge trust fund transfer, and you'll show that it's got 315,000 for 220, and then 221, 315,000, et cetera, et cetera. So it just shows a carry out for the five year period for the capital outlay program. Whoop, I hit the wrong button.
Robin has provided for you uh, those maps showing potential improvements in the hatched areas. And then under the legend, uh, I read off the future areas, which were the last five listed things under the legend within the red area, but then he hatched it so you have a better view of what the potential projects could be uh, for our next major arterial and improvement update. The only thing that's not hatched on there would be the bridge. If in fact you feel it's necessary to go to concrete versus concrete and pavement, that condition that we have today. Likewise, I attached the map that shows you know, what we've completed to date for our rosin lining on our sanitary sewer lines and what we propose for future lining throughout the city. Just one question. When, you, when, when you're looking at um, improvements to some of these major roads, are we looking at well, counts regarding how many cars are going across that roadway in a day? I, I see Melgard Road uh, on the list and wondering if if that's at a point that we have enough cars going over it that it's necessary to be doing that roadway. There's a combination of things. Conditionally, one, one factor is the amount of traffic that is carried by that particular road. Look at. Um, there are other safety concerns that we have beyond, you know, steep side slopes, uh, mm -hmm. steeper ditches, things like that. We look at a number of different factors. But I would say most conditions probably the first one, and then it's coupled with the traffic volume of the, uh, the other things. Not a lot of houses out that way, but people are going to commercial. Places. Plus, it's on the south side, so the south siders will be arguing for that <laughs> that particular roadway. <laughs> a lot of truck traffic. Yeah, a lot of truck traffic. Um, as far as uh, the overpass, I just wanted to ask a question. Uh, the asphalt surface is still in pretty good shape, right? In reasonable shape, you know, you're you're going through you're going through a number of uh, patches and trying to get the transitions into those concrete structures smoothed out. That's a challenge. As you can see, there's a couple spots that even though we bumpy. did our best mm -hmm. effort, this is pretty yeah. bumpy. Uh, Would it be a good candidate for a mill and overlay? It could possibly be a candidate for mill and overlay. Structurally, there is not a lot wrong with it, but it's just trying to get the overall uh, everything just lined back up so it could ride as well. Because uh, that what? was nine inches of asphalt. <coughs> that was eight. Rides nicer than 8th Avenue Northeast. Parts of it. <coughs> <coughs> No, 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 no. I said no. northeast. Yeah, northeast. I said northeast yeah. over by <laughs> OM Tiffany. Right. And I, I think that the overpass seems to be in good shape right now. Mm -hmm. And and it's it's difficult to spend a million plus on a surface that you know would would it be improved at yeah, long term, but it's. And as far as uh, the business loop for 281, have we ever considered going and just putting down an asphalt mat over the concrete? That would be one of the one of the thoughts uh, to do a crack and see and asphalt over. Yes, we've considered that, and we are talking about that. We need to. Talk to folks who have done that to come up with a protocol to make sure that what we do is going to be a decent long term. Okay. Well, with asphalt, you only get about 30 years anyway. But Well, and I don't know that you'd be looking at grabbing no. 30 years. I think you'd be looking at a, a 15 year mm -hmm. life cycle on something like that at this point. Because some of those patches out on that area as hell have held up pretty pretty well yeah. and of course the intersections have been redone when the state went and did their work but like I say it just seems like we need to keep moving working on certain arterials to create those perimeter roads to ease traffic I don't know I look at this and the first thing it, I mean Pine Street 
when you live on that, street, mm -hmm. it is. And we'll be starting that next year. Well, that's one of the proposed ones here, right? No. One of the ones that's <coughs> mm -hmm. So are we, are, that's one of our considerations, one of your six. Yes, and of course that one's coupled with storm sewer. Storm sewer. You're not going to want to put a new surface over unless we repair the, the underlying pipe. That underlying pipe is more expensive than the surface. So uh, that's where we'd end up. For this year, we're proposing to do from the railroad tracks up to Second Avenue. But there's, you know, of course, there's pipe beyond that. And that, that whole section is tough. You're absolutely yeah. right. It's, it's, it's difficult. It's but the worst it's, street in Aberdeen. It's still probably your most expensive street in Aberdeen, also because of the underlying infrastructure. But that is something we are currently starting to tackle. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's listed here as one of your possible ones, but it's not really. I mean, we're we're already doing it. We'll be doing parts of it, yes. Okay. So it doesn't necessarily have to be part of any of our considerations. Okay. All right. That helps. Question here, Robin, for the Melgard Road option. Uh, what would be the um, configuration of the lanes? Would we be looking at? Um, keeping the sloped um, drop off, or would there be um, a sidewalk uh, drains? What what would the engineering configuration no, we, look like? We would, you know, we would want to try to get it to that three lane configuration with, with bike path if possible. Mm -hmm. It is it is uh, just a, a bigger challenge to be able to do that. Uh, the urban section converting a rural section into an urban section is. Uh, you're moving dirt and you're trying and you're putting pipe underground versus having the ditches which, which carry the flow that uh, your storm sewer flow. Uh, we would want that to be a three lane section. It's, yeah. it's too narrow uh, given the amount of traffic that we're seeing and uh, it's not as safe as it should be in, in my opinion. That in turn, that continuation of the same um, road bed might um, actually trigger uh, some neighborhood development out that way. It's possible. Yeah, I could see that occurring within certainly the life of that road. Hmm? Um, would you prefer that up instead of having a curve? No, I'd rather keep the curve in there than having a right angle turn. Uh, I think you'll, end, you'll, you'll reduce the amount of accidents by doing the, the curve versus having a a dead end stop. Right now, you got you'll have a lot of if you if you run run stuff north south through that. Uh, I think you'll see higher speeds get through that intersection, and then you're going to force the other traffic. So I don't see anything on here um, on North Dakota Street, North Dakota Street, north of Twenty Four. Do you have anything planned for that with the new development going in there? Well, it's not a city street at this point. It's a county road. Not yet, but it will be by this time next year. Okay. <laughs> you got, you got you inside information? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, no. not. We already approved the six, didn't we? Not for that road, but you've got a. For the housing development? You've got the tip for the development, not for that road. They're, they're not developing the Dakota Street as part of that. No, I, I know, but it'll be... When will we bring that street into the... When, the well, the and actually, that's that's a county decision, partially. Uh, typically, when we accept roadways, we want things to be in a certain standard. The county may have to do some things that to bring it into a maybe a little higher standard okay. uh, that may not be in their mind the best use of their funds at this time. We have not had that discussion put it that way. There would be, uh, I'm sure, an interest by the council to dedicate <coughs> that to the city or to turn that over to the city in the near future. I agree. They would they would want to have it maintained by the city at some point in time. Usually we ask for some improvements as part of that. You still looking for the walking path? I'll recommend that you go to the city in the future with the side problem. We're, we're 
we're go going to be putting that on the outside edge so it does not uh, affect us in the near term future. It may have to be reconstructed at a later time when that road is reconstructed. Good point. Yeah. Probably in the next month. Um, <clears throat> under number nine, the Roosevelt North Avenue Railroad cross crossing. Did we decide on a configuration there, or is this just is this just a number based on kind of an average of the that we got or options? Uh, configuration as in as in how whether we're going to put the concrete down the center and close off one of the accesses to the credit union there. Um, the, there's a difference between the, the crossing improvements and the silent crossings. Okay. Is, that's two separate processes. At this point, we would be doing the crossings, and I'd say really regardless of how you choose to proceed with the silent crossings, you will do the meeting at the same time. One best way to do the medians, the 8th Avenue piece is a slam dunk as far as what you're going to do. It's, it's going to be the same regardless. The Roosevelt one is a challenge because of the, the proximity of the driveways. Um, we have been in co contact with the credit union. They would prefer us not to close off their, for obvious reasons. So our intent would be to bring the cross or that median up to, but not through their driveway, so they still have their left out uh, of their driveway onto Roosevelt, uh, and the one to the north or to the south of the cross, and uh, we can we can do pretty much what we need to do, and we can reconfigure those driveways. Would this money be to start that process, or would it be to get? Because I think the most important thing would be getting them signalized, or is this the yes, whole thing? Just to, do it, to do the work. Okay. So, this will be our prorated share of the cost. Okay. To get it signalized. Okay. In regards to the the utility sanitary sewer, the pipelining. Five hundred thousand. You said that's the same amount that we did last year. Five hundred thousand. Well, and I know it varies based on the size of the pipe and, and lots of um, lots of different variables. But about how many city blocks can we get for half a million dollars? Well, our, our first priority probably will be that piece that currently goes under the new NSC field, okay. Boyd Street. That's forty-two inch pipe. Uh, you chew the money up pretty fast on a plate that size. So that will be, you're going to want to go uh, a reasonable distance. I'd like to get past me over these so we don't tie the school up. The intent right now would be to do that work, bid it this fall, uh, have that work done sometime between May and August of next year, so uh, late May into August, so it doesn't tie up anything related to the elementary school, number one. And number two, it doesn't uh, affect the schedules for NSU for their usage of those fields. Because we will have to bypass pump. And as anybody who recalls us setting up bypass pumping on 11th Avenue, it's difficult. So it, it ties up the whole neighborhood. I'd rather get down to maybe 15th Avenue so we don't have to mess with that area. Maybe even 16th. Are there any other questions concerning the 2019-2023 capital outlay program? If not, I will move into the 2019 uh, budget proposal. In reviewing the opening letter, you'll notice that I highlighted important facts about the city's two major revenue sources, and these two Sources amount to about 65% of the total general fund revenues, and that is sales tax and property tax. And I feel it's necessary that I'm going to read parts of my opening letter so you better understand where I'm coming from. 
The Supreme Court on Thursday, June 21st, 2018, moved to close the sales tax loophole, ruling that internet realtor, uh, realtors will be required to collect sales tax even in states where they have no physical presence. Hopefully this ruling will help our local businesses by eliminating their disadvantage by having to charge sales tax while many of the online competitors don't charge for e-commerce sales. The city finance officer and I are optimistic that this ruling should be a positive impact upon sales tax collections for the state of South Dakota in the city of Aberdeen. <clears throat> the city of Aberdeen's increase in sales tax revenues have been marginal for the last four years. The net increase in sales tax for the general fund for the last four years was $325,000 or less than 1% average per year, which I talked about a 1,000 in the previous document where I talked about the other uh, 1%. And you may ask, and I just received this a couple of days ago from the Re Retailers Association, what steps will the Department of Revenue take to implement the tax changes now that the Supreme Court has ruled in South Dakota's favor? Once the injunction is dissolved, the department will begin notifying, identifying unlicensed remote sellers that they potentially meet the licensing and filing requirements set in South Dakota statute. The department will work with these businesses to assist them with licensing and filing as well as following up with businesses that do not comply. Then you might ask, well, what's the threshold uh, for notification? The law applies to online realtor, realtors with 200 or more separate transactions in South Dakota or with $100,000 or more in gross sales into South Dakota in the previous calendar year, year or the current calendar year. And once a business reach that, reaches that mark, the state tax all the companies in state transactions from the previous year. And so they're already putting out data as to how they're going to approach <coughs> the most recent Supreme Court decision. But I just wanted to highlight you know, when you looked at the previous sales tax collections for the last year, four-year period, they've been somewhat marginal. Uh, Carl probably has more data than I do about talks with the state as to what the true impact will this will be, but he put a portion of that impact within our sales tax estimated revenues for 2019. Earlier I said that we took the 2019 actual, and then we added 1.5% for 2018 and 1.5% for 2019. In addition to those percentages, he added uh, just a gross amount to 200,000 because he thought that that impact of the Supreme Court's decision impact would have an increase. And so even though we've seen marginal increases, we believe the future will uh, bring back some of the increases that we saw in the past. But moving on, South Dakota codified law 103535 imposes tax levy limitations each year based upon the lesser of 3% or the annual percentage change in the consumer price index for urban wage earners as computed by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. The calculated allowable property tax increase for tax year 2017 was 0%. The property tax increase for 2018 was 1% and then 2.1% for 2019. So basically new revenues from property tax revenues have only occurred mainly because the new tax value gained from property improvements for the last two years. And so when you looked at our revenue, two main revenue sources, which comprise 65% of the general fund, the last few years have not been what I would call growth years within the sales tax as well as within the property tax. We're very fortunate to have the construction that we've had Otherwise, the property tax would have probably been 0% increase when you look at the low percentages of the increase. The recommended 2019 budget was prepared with limited growth after I just explained why. And actually, the total growth of the budget, if you don't count the airport projects, because the airport has over $2 million dollars in revenues and then it has over two million eight hundred thousand dollars in expenses would only be 1.37 percent increase from the previous year i'm recommending adding only one full-time position 
Uh, this position would be a school resource officer, which would allow the school district to have one officer assigned to each middle school and would provide additional coverage to assist the elementary schools. The funding would be 7525 cost share between the Aberdeen School District and the City of Aberdeen. An item of interest planned for 2019 would be the codification of ordinances. Approximately 10 years ago, the code of ordinances were reviewed for changes. Uh, our current city attorney is very aggressive in modernizing language and also changing language. It's too much sometimes. <laughs> 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 to meet current notifications and operational practices. But this will be a positive overall because when you look at some of the ordinances, you can see that it was language from 20 years ago and Ron's done actually an excellent job. Was that a comment regarding the chicken ordinance? <laughs> 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 I'll, I'll save my comments for later. <laughs> uh, one significant area that we'll see expected improvements will be ride line. Uh, Cody talked about this about two weeks ago. Uh, we'll have the acquisition of three new buses for 2019. One will be a 30 passenger bus, one 16 passenger bus, and one 14 passenger bus. All the current vehicles that are being replaced are at least 10 years of age. And the city's responsibility uh, for purchase costs is 20% of total or $72,000. Another significant improvement that we'll see uh, for 2019, which I made reference to within the capital outlay, would be upgrades uh, at the airport. We're looking at a new passenger loading bridge estimated to cost $850,000 and a $1,700,000 to uh, do taxiway C reconstruction. If you think about it, during the last four-year period from 2014 to 2017, major airport expenditure upgrades have amounted to over $13 million, a clear majority of that funding coming from the federal government. And a majority of that funding was not designated funding, it was discretionary funding, and that was because of the efforts of airport personnel, including the gentleman that announced that he would be leaving and going on to bigger things. I'm optimistic uh, that, that the, the Supreme Court decision on e-commerce taxation and new property tax valuation from some of the larger projects in the community as they finish will assist the city in future revenue growth. Moving on to page two, uh, shows municipal tax due from 2013 to 2017. It shows the 10 largest cities of South Dakota. And if you go and look at the column called 2016 to 2017, you'll see that Aberdeen had the largest percentage of tax increase for uh, that period at 3.12%. However, the net gain in sales tax is somewhat misleading in this chart because as part of the AGP development agreement, the city agreed to refund 50% of the sales tax on non-realty and realty purchases for the plant. And so therefore, uh, that sales tax refund, uh, if you look at the difference between 2016 and 2017, it amounted to $562,000. Our 50% sales tax refund was $353,000. And so our net revenue change for the uh, for the 2% sales tax was $208,000. If we had granted a 100% refund, the city would have experienced a negative $145,000 for 2017. Moving on, uh, the next chart shows uh, state uh, statistics by standard industrial classifications for total growth within South Dakota taxable sales, and that showed to be 1.05%, and it shows the standard industrial classification areas where it's got egg, forestry, and fishing, mining, construction, manufacturing, and for the state as a whole, you'll see that construction was probably the leader in percentage of increase. Likewise, if you go on to the next sheet, it shows Aberdeen statistics by standard industrial classification for state taxable sales within Aberdeen. And you'll see for state taxable sales within Aberdeen, we were less than one percent, less than one half percent increase. And uh, our areas of increase uh, seem to be manufacturing, transportation, and construction. Our areas of decrease were retail, trade, finance, and 
and insurance and real estate and services. I put together uh, time frames expected for the 2019 budget calendar. I'm hoping to have your cooperation for a work session on August 13th at 5 p.m. Likewise, I'm hoping for a first reading of the city budget and five-year capital improvement plan on September 4th and a second reading of the city budget and five-year capital <coughs> improvement plan on September 17th. Page 10 explains the annual budget process in case there's interest by the public as well as yourself. <laughs> Listing of the council. Page 12, there's our mission statement and core values. Page 14 shows 2,000 city property taxes on a house valued at $100,000 market value, and that was $566 in total. And I also listed what the property taxes would be from the city for a $200,000 home, that would be $1,132.70. A $300,000 home would be $1,699.05. And so you can see you know, the impact of city property taxes on a market value of $100,000. The next sheet shows Aberdeen tax comparison data from 2011 to 2017. It shows what the city tax levy is, as well as change in revenues, as well as the city mill rate, but it also shows city taxes on a house, once again, at a $100,000 value market value. And it shows in 2011, that house would have paid $524 for city property taxes. And as of 2017, paid in 2018, that house was paying $566.35. And so over that six-year period, the net increase was $41.55, or $6.92 per year. So a fairly low amount. Another interesting uh, column that you should be looking at is what's called increase in valuation, which is at the very bottom of that uh, tax comparison data. And when you do a seven-year average for new building valuation, our seven-year average has been $38 million per year. And so that's significant. And as I stated earlier, if it wasn't for uh, that area of growth, we wouldn't have really received any increases in property tax. Total mill levy breakout for all entities. For the most part, a majority of city properties are owner-occupied. So if you go to the mill column, if in fact an individual said that they had to pay $100 in property taxes for all entities, $19 goes to the county, $32 goes to the city, and $47 goes to the school district. And so when a person tells you that they paid over $1,000 in property taxes, remember our share is only 32% of total. And I hear that quite often when I talk to the public. They don't distinguish between what portion goes to the school district, what portion goes to the county, what portion goes to the city. Next sheet just shows function, uh, organizational chart of the city. <coughs> Pages 16 and 17 uh, deal with budget policy financial controls. Page 18. Uh, shows the operating budget funds of the city. We have over 53 different funds in total. Carl, I took the time to add that up. I knew it, we had several, but I didn't realize we had 53 different funds within the city. And so it, you can see that probably keeps them busy when he has to account for all the different funds and the revenues and expenditures for each fund. Moving on to the general budget for 2019. Uh, for the general fund, including... Uh, we're looking at $28,667,000. And when you do the functional breakout, 13% of that would go for general government activities, 21% for culture and recreation, 28% for public safety, 1.82% for economic development, 32% for public works, 1.56% for transfers, and 0.51% for health and welfare. The dollar proposal for the general fund expenditures, which includes parks, recreation, forestry, and airport operations for 2019 is $28,667,000, or an $838,000 increase from the previous year allocation. 
The total tax support increase for all expenses for 2019, including transfers and then including the airport improvement projects is 3%. But if I take out the airport improvement projects and the transfers, as I stated before, it's only 1.37%. And that's really our true percentage of increase because the federal revenues are just grossing up our revenues. Likewise, the federal expenses are just grossing up our expenses. Uh, to balance the budget, uh, we usually take uh, and reallocate an unspent previous year budget dollars and the uh, amount used to balance the 2019 budget was $260,000. And I showed you the transfer amount from previous years as follows for 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. In the middle of the page, you'll notice the breakout showing the requested department had budget amounts for 2019 versus the manager's recommended budget amounts for the categories of operation and maintenance and capital outlay to balance the budget and as you can see it was necessary for Carl and I to reduce the request uh, to balance out the budget and so from what was asked and what we could actually provide uh, you're looking at roughly $878,000 difference in operations maintenance and capital outlay expenditure type comparison for years 2014 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Of that $28,667,000, 58% is for personal services, 14% for capital outlay, and 26% for operations and maintenance, and 2% for transfers and other funds. Personal services include salaries as well as insurance and other associated personnel costs. Uh, for the year 2019, when you look at the general fund, parks and rec, fund and forestry and airport, uh, the salary amounts will end up being $16,577,000. The current level for full-time employees would be 270 employees based upon my earlier recommendation of adding the school resource officer. We actually sit at 269 right now. Moving on to page 23, it shows necessary budget transfers to offset operational losses for the following four enterprise accounts. Uh, the ambulance, 281,000. Airport, 449,000. Uh, golf fund, 165,000. And then parks and rec, 3,964,000. So there's a significant amount of uh, transfers to offset operational losses for these various different enterprise accounts. I talked about uh, sales tax in the earlier part of my presentation, so I'll skip the second half of page 23. Uh, likewise, page 24 just shows the standard industrial classifications as to where we showed increases within sales tax for municipal sales tax as well as where we showed decreases within municipal sales tax. Earlier I talked about uh, that uh, our property tax increase is tied to the consumer price index or 3%, which is ever less. And I indicated the payable of 2019 amount that we could use was 2.1%. In addition to that, then Carl did an estimate based upon new property value. And so the city finance officer has calculated the percentage of increase to be approximately 2.75% when factoring an index factor with new property growth. And so the net gain in revenue is expected to be 225000 and the total uh, property tax revenue will be at $9,286,000. And earlier I told you that the sales tax would be $9,074,000. So you can see those two revenue sources are almost identical. But they do make up 65% of total revenues for the general fund. Moving on to page 26, it shows our other revenue sources. The third large revenue source is charge for services, and the fourth revenue charge is uh, uh, intergovernmental revenues. And I listed what we expected in federal grants as well as state grants, and uh, various different county shared revenues and state shared revenues. Likewise, uh, what we expect to receive for licensees, fees, and permits. <coughs> 
This next chart uh, shows summary of major revenues and expenditures, and it shows, for example, revenue, the ma major revenue categories within the general fund, tax levy, sales tax, other taxes, license permits, and intergovernmental revenues, et cetera. And then it shows also revenues for the airport, parks, and rec, as well as expenditures for each one of those categories. And if you look at the airport operation, you'll see that the fees only uh, amount to 42% of the cost. And so you can understand why a subsidy is necessary for the airport. Likewise, Parks and Rec, with all the programs that we have for Parks and Rec, their charges for services only cover 15% of the total cost. So in essence, whatever program that we add, it ends up being an additional cost for the city. Unallocated general fund balance, uh, that amount as of the end of 2017 will be $5,917,000. And that amounts to approximately 21% of our total annual allocation. Constitutional debt limit is 89 million. And our existing debt is 33 million. So we're only using 37% of our allotted percentage, which is good news that we're not in a position where we don't have flexibility for the future if, in fact, that we need it. And as you can see, as we continue to pay off our existing debt, that percentage of allotment is lower. You addressed the promotion fund in May and June. <coughs> We're talking a total of $1,150,000. This sheet this shows where you showed your preliminary allocations for the promotion fund. The rest of the, the budget booklet provides uh, utility data showing total billable utility fee comparison, percentage of change, individual enterprise fee comparison, and I'll go through these very quickly, historical inflation rate versus combined utility charges, and annual gallons of water pumped from the water treatment plant. Now, as you can see, this shows you know, where a typical residence would be based upon a 5,000 gallons of water used per month when you added their water sewer storm garbage and recycling fee, it would be roughly $73.41 per month. And in 2009, that same person using 5,000 gallons, it would have been $63.33. Next shows historical inflation rate, CPIU versus combined utility charges. And you can see many times that we've been below the actual inflation rate worth our utility charge increases. This sheet shows enterprise fees uh, from 2009 to 2018, and it shows the appropriate times when we've changed those fees and what the percentage of increase was for those various fees. And so you can see some of these fees we have not changed for the last eight year period. For example, I'm looking at, uh, for example, sewer base charge, $10. It's been that way since 2009. This chart uh, I found to be of interest, especially being that we've expanded what I would call the industrial users within our current system. Previously, uh, most of the water consumed throughout the city was residential. And so it is having a slight impact on our total. As you can see, uh, when you look at average daily gallons of water pumped from the water treatment plant in 2015, it was 3,109,000 gallons pumped. And uh, starting in 2017, that new number now is 3,827,000 gallons pump per day on average. Water fund shows ending year cash balance between 2016 and 2017. It actually grew by $233,000. Likewise, it shows the sewer fund showing a decrease of $1,186,000. But if you remember right, uh, for the year 2016, 2017, we did significant upgrades out to a wastewater treatment plant, and we paid for those upgrades out of our cash balance. Ride line, uh, as you know, provides affordable transportations for persons with disability, older adults, and individuals with lower income. 
And I showed you a sheet showing the various different subsidies within right in line. And you'll see for the year 2017, the subsidy actually decreased down to $44,464. Thank you, Cody. I have many other city materials added to this booklet. For example, uh, Exhibit A shows employee positions in the various different divisions throughout the city. As I stated, I would like to hire additional police uh, resource officers so they change the number of full-time employees to 270, but you can see in 2018 that number was 269. Budgetary increases for all expenses. I'm showing a breakout, showing salaries and benefit, operation and maintenance and capital improvement, and showing the total increase in budget for the various different years from 2008 all the way to 2017. I would have put 18, but uh, we put actual amounts, not budgeted amounts, so I don't know what those numbers are at this time. Fire and emergency uh, service calls uh, shows fire calls uh, are increasing. Don't know why. And it shows that the EMS calls are actually decreasing, but it shows the total calls have re remained relatively the same for the fire department under Exhibit C. Exhibit D, uh, this is a very informational chart produced by Planning and Zoning. But when you look at from 2008 to 2017, over 749 single family home permits were issued during that time period. So an average of 74 permits per year. Likewise, multifamily units, over 1,029 apartment units were constructed from 2008 to 2017, which on an annual average is 102 per, per units per year. I think the previous decade, we didn't even see 102 apartments being created, let alone 102 per year during an eight-year period. Commercial building permits recap. Uh, this is an interesting chart because if you look at the six-year average commercial building, it amounts to $682,000 when you look at total values. But you've got to keep in mind, that's materials only. So if you actually add it on the labor, that number actually doubles to a million two is what the average cost of a new building was, commercial building when it was constructed within Aberdeen. Have some additional data. Uh, Schedule A, now this shows the actual revenue uh, for the various different funds, all the funds within the city from 2015 uh, to 2019 with proposed revenues. In addition, if you go to the next sheet, it shows the breakout for the various different departments for personal services, maintenance, and capital outlay, what their proposed budget was, what the recommended budget was, and that shows uh, the various different prior year budgets for the various different departments and all the funds within the city. A very detailed report. Schedule C uh, just shows fiscal year 2018 versus 2019. It's a little easier to read than the previous chart that shows uh, multiple years, but it shows the cost of personal services. Likewise, operation and maintenance, percentage increases within each of these appropriate areas. And it shows the total, what the total percentage was for all the various different departments of the general fund. Are there any questions about the general fund budget document? What was your, what was your proposed uh, increase in salaries from 2018 to 2019? I could tell you what the change will be in personal services, but I'd rather not say what the proposed salary oh. increase would be because you put me in a unique position when I go to negotiate. Okay, not a problem. Because I can bet you that the request will be exactly that dollar amount. But I can tell you for personal services, the total increase, including all expenses with personal services, goes beyond salaries. That might be health insurance, it might be workers' comp, and et cetera, is 
it's like two something. Two point two eight percent. I was a little optimistic you had already tied up the negotiations. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for doing all this. You're more than welcome. There are a lot it's of all hours Greek that, to me. <laughs> that goes into this, and I uh, there are a lot of people that are involved. All the department heads are involved. Uh, special efforts are done by Robin within the capital outlay, and special efforts by Carl within the general budget. And we try to give you as much data as we can to inform you, uh, so you when you talk to the public, you can answer the questions. But anytime you present financial data, it's tough to keep people's interest. I think we could safely say, Lynn, there's no major philosophical or operational change in this from you know what you brought us in previous years. Obviously, you've made some adjustments that have been needed, but uh, uh, the success of uh, you and the department heads' work in previous years is validated by the fact that uh, we're kind of going to do it again. <laughs> so. Very well stated. Thank yep. you. So anything else uh, from... From Lynn, we'll have plenty of opportunity to look through this and come up with other questions. So thanks from, from me also, Lynn. So. Thank you. With that, is there anything else from anyone before we adjourn? Uh, just Thank a quick question. Uh, on the corner of Wells and Goodrich, they still have work that's being done there? On the, um, what do you call them, the corners? Quadrants been over it's been quite a while since they had to repair that water line water line I, I can do some okay. I guess I'm not sure what's that. neighbors or the people in the area were just wondering what was the timeline for getting that done I do know that um, depending on which contract we're operating under for that part of it um, our concrete contractors are, are so tied up with so many things right now it's you can see they're, they're mm -hmm. being, uh, pushed hard right now, and I would hope that a lot of things within a month will start to settle back in as far as our Okay. Anyone else? Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Motion, uh, Remley, and uh, second, uh, Bunsen. All in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned.